Hi everyone and welcome back to Bold and Blissful Woman where we help you connect with your feminine essence to create the extraordinary life and love you desire. Today we have a very special guest. Her name is Rory Ray. She has been helping women all over the world to have the dream love life they desire and get the man that they desire as well. Now she's been helping women in the process of also having it all, which is what she's going to be sharing with us today. Welcome. I'm excited to have you here today. Hi, Nicole. Happy to be here. You're, you're charming, incredibly charming. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask you, like, if you could share with us a little bit of what you, you've been doing for the past couple of years, your new projects, and, you know, what is your message all about? Thank you. Great question. Well, most people know me as a relationship guru, and I know we're having some internet connection problems, so this is weird, you know why. As, an, as a relationship guru, and from the book, Have the Relationship You Want and the Modern Siren, teaching women how to lean back, how to draw in the attention of men, how to not chase, not push, not lean forward. And what I really discovered in this process is that women feel, we all feel at our core that we cannot have both love and meaningful work. We can't make money and be successful or really intimidate men. And so not only is that holding us back in life and with work, it's holding us back with men because we're not fully ourselves and we're not free to expand. So what I've done is I've taken the whole modern siren concept, and I'll explain the siren concept, and turned it into the business siren. And there's more to it than that, but the essence of it is that you can have it all not by switching back and forth between your masculine energy hats and, and your feminine when you're with a guy, as much as always being in your feminine and letting all of the action that comes from the hard work we do in business just turn in into, just become this masculine energy so that essentially we are always in our feminine, even when we're doing stuff. And this makes it possible for us to draw in the world and draw in men at the same time. And I teach how to balance all of that out. But mostly now I'm focused in on creating businesses that you love. I have trained coaches now. I have coach training and business trainings. Doing it from the feminine so you don't get overwhelmed and out of sorts and start to feel like you're you know, completely in your head. It's a whole different experience. Yeah, I, I love everything that you mentioned. I, I know personally, I, I had this belief, well, you know, I can't have love and my business, you know, at the same time, kind of like seemed crazy talk for me back then. But I was also very called to it because I knew that I shouldn't settle. So, like, I would like to start talking about that because I know that we're going to be talking about how to be fully in your feminine, you know, and still get stuff done. So can we talk about this element of settling? Like what are the causes that a woman may think that she has to choose from? And what can she start to do to really let go of that old belief? Because I know there's a lot of resistance Ooh, at first. Great question. Well, you know, you made me think of this. The bottom line of everything for me is passion. We're women. Yeah. We're emotional. We're emotional creatures. We're passionate. If that doesn't fuel everything we feel disconnected from ourselves we have kind of become automatic we've tried to become like little men wearing dresses and what that does is that shuts us down we start to shut down we start to feel an overwhelm of emotion because we don't know what it is and we don't know how to express it and we don't know what to do with it and so we hide it and so so many of us starting out in business or starting out in life can't even uh, recognize what our passion is for. Mm. So we settle because we don't even know what we want. And, you know, we don't even need to know what we want. We don't need to know anything in my book here. Because when you're operating from your instinct, from your feminine intuitive, things just feel right or they don't. Mm. They, they feel connected to you on a deep level or they don't. Here's some examples. My my idea is I have lots of tools because it's easy to say, oh, get grounded, get centered. <laughs> you know, it's just a bunch of words to me. 
So I would say if you're standing there and you're feeling unconfident and you can feel yourself rising up and everything's coming through your neck, make yourself a tree. Plant yourself in the ground. Be a tree. You know, put your roots down. Feel your trunk. And the moment you feel that, all of a sudden everything changes inside your body for you. And after a while, even that tool gets old and your body starts to reach just so that's why I have so many tools around it so you can experience yourself being in your ground. It's feminine. It's totally feminine. So when you know how to do that and, you know, we lie awake at night, we're going on in our heads, yeah. we're thinking, but there are those moments when we start to drift, those moments when we can feel ourselves start to drift. We can feel ourselves going deep into our body we can feel the body kind of melting down and it kind of going to sleep and then we pull ourselves right back out yeah. we pull ourselves back up to our head on purpose and we do that when we're walking we do that when we're talking we pull ourselves out of our feminine and if we can get used to catching that and the practice sorry i got a phone ringing i should close the door there <laughs> as soon as we notice that we are doing this it becomes a practice. It becomes a kind of an experience, a meditation, and then we get better at it. We get better at recognizing when we're down into our, our lower selves, into ourselves, and then we're better able to make decisions from that place, and we start to catch on to the whole business siren protocol, which is what it is. That's so interesting, and, and it, the question that keeps coming up for me is, why is it important to be connected to your body or grounded? Like in, in your own definition, what's the biggest importance of that? Great questions. Whoa. They're <laughs> awesome. Okay. When we're operating from our heads, when we can feel that we're trying to get something done and that is driving us, our masculine energy is in play. We're trying to get something done. Well, like a big deal. The problem is, it is an instinctive pushing energy. It's instinctively pushing out. It's instinctively leaning forward, going towards what we want to do, who we want to be with, what we want to have happen. The urgency feeds it, and it drives everyone away. Mm -hmm. It just pushes people away. If what you want in business is to bring people to you and bring money to you, you can't operate from this pushing place. Men can't. Men can, theoretically, but men who do really well don't operate from that place either. They've learned how to listen to people. They've learned a lot of feminine skills. They've learned feminine skills, but we've really got it. We're in there. If we are pushing, we're doing the opposite of what we want. So when we sink down into ourselves and we're operating from this feminine place of hearing, People experiencing, drawing in, feeling what we're feeling and feeling it, we start to expand. Our energy gets bigger. It just kind of goes out. It radiates. It enraptures everyone around us and brings us in. That's why it's so important. We make more money. We do better. Right. We feel better. We can work longer hours. We get more accomplished. Plus, speaking about the passion, all of a sudden, we realize that what we need to express is in here, and then it comes out on paper. It comes out in our programs. It comes out in our where we speak to men. Now we're cooking. Yeah, that's that's beautiful. And it occurred to me. I know that you were mentioning that you have several tools around this, especially in business. What do you do when you are? in your masculine and you're about to have like a business uh, conversation or a sales conversation, how do you ground yourself back to your feminine? Like do you have any tools that can help women with this so that you can, before they have those powerful conversations? So many. Uh, the, the tree, make yourself a tree. Mm -hmm. Can't move, can't go forward. Lean back in your chair. Find yourself a chair that where you can get comfy and lean back. The instinct is to lean forward and listen to that. Lean back. Think of yourself as expanding and let it all kind of breathe out. And now, just focus your energy on hearing the other person. It's the opposite of what we want to do. We want them to hear us. We want to speak. We want to do something. Focus instead on taking in the other person, hearing 
them, become their cheerleader, reassure them that you get them, that you understand them. When you are in that frame of mind and you're not pushing your own agenda, magic happens. You automatically in your feminine and the person in front of you is going to do the amazing thing of leaning forward into you and wanting what you have. If you are leaning forward into them, they're automatically going like this, leaning back. If you're leaning back, hearing them, they are automatically leaning forward. There's only one way to go. This is, I call this the relationship bubble for my work with romance. It works this way with men. If you're leaning forward, the guy has no place to go but backwards and out the bubble. If you're leaning back and relaxing and being enjoying yourself and feeling your siren self playing on the island, he's going to come towards you and crash his boat <laughs> on the rock and just go for you. That's the way it works in business, too. Same thing. I have a, a, a belief, which is how I met you. If somebody shows up on my doorstep, they're supposed to be there. There's a reason for that. It's a message. It's a messenger. And, you know, here I have this great relationship with you now. And then you're going to lead me to other people. And I believe somebody else, the great Tatia D, who you're also going to interview on this series, is led you to me. Yes. And I will probably lead you to others as we go forward. That is an extremely feminine way of being, to take in what comes and let that lead you. I love that. And it's interesting that you were mentioning about leaning back, you know, going forward. Because I did notice that, like, in, on my mind internally, I noticed that you were leaning back as you were speaking, and I was like this, right? So that's, <laughs> that's the natural <laughs> way. Well, try it the other way. If you're going to interview me, um, but you probably want your is what's really smart is you probably want your interviewee to lean back yeah some of the time so but still you can be led by your feminine to physically lean forward by allowing your desire yes. to take them in there's another way to do that but 99 percent of the time go ahead try it lean back and see what i do okay. yeah all right my first thought is oh yeah, and is my interview less powerful if I do this? No. Very interesting. Now you get to move back and forth, and yeah. basically you get to control the energy yes. by doing that. Pretty powerful tool. It, it is, and I didn't used to get it before, but now I do. And it makes me think. I've heard it so many times. You know, people tell me, well, Nicole, either I have to be my feminine or I have to be my masculine. And I know that you have, like, a very interesting approach to all of this about you know how you actually get things done so could you start like telling us a little bit about how your feminine leads you to do inspired action in a way that feels good to you that is brilliant all right so getting stuff done requires what organization to-do lists a plan all those things well theoretically they're masculine but emotionally and where they come from is feminine so what I've done is I've created protocols and tools in all of my business siren handbook and all the programs where you can do these things. Mm -hmm. So I created something called the evolutionary to-do list. Mm -hmm. My to-do list, I get more done than anybody I know. My to-do list started with a one a notebook where I wrote every single thing down that came out of my brain, brain dump, everything. The groceries went on the same page as putting up the web page. Nothing was more important or less important. And then I would just chalk those off the list when I did them. That meant when I did that, that means that whatever I feel like doing, I can do, right? I if I, I'm a feminine, I look down this whole list and I can see put, put groceries away or take a picture or put the picture on the website, build this page, I can pick whatever feels most fun to me at that moment and do it off the list. Well, I discovered that by doing it that way, where it came from my desire, my passion, what I felt like doing, sometimes I feel like fooling off business cards. Sometimes I feel like doing banners. And these are things I do not recommend that people get caught up in doing. It, it's not... 
that's those are the things that newbies get stuck doing those details but sometimes that's all you want to do you're curled up on the couch and you just want to watch tv and instead pull out your list so the evolutionary to-do list starts with that brain dump you just everything the laundry the the dry cleaning there is no order to it just everything now you're sitting there and instead of watching tv you make a decision because you've got your list in front of you and you must read it many 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 times a day because it's there put it on your phone get some apps for all of your devices i use quip i like it very much but there's so many other google docs whatever you want to use so that you're always looking at that list and memorize it because it'll just show up for you now you know and amazingly enough your feminine will just go Ooh, i feel like doing that i feel like doing that go on your list do it it could be something as simple as writing a letter to somebody for a potential jv or answering your email or anything and cross it off your list there you go now you find that your list is smaller now the evolution Evolutionary part of it happens. Now you want to start prioritizing it. So I organize these things many different ways, many different lists. I've organized them by projects. This is about selling. So these are my pages, etc. This is about um, building a program, a project. And I have all my 10 projects I'm working on and all those programs. And what needs to happen? A page here, a sales page, a video. Write them all down, every little bit. And then I start doing the important feminine work of chipping away at it mm. just chip away at it where people get stuck is in the masculine view of i've got to see this project through from beginning to end because that's the work model if you work for somebody else you do a project mm. it's project management this way you get to do a video for this program a video for this pro program a video to sell that if you feel like putting a camera in front of you, making phone calls, you get to do whatever you want. And amazingly enough, the list gets smaller and things start to coagulate. Then you can put them in priorities. I have to do this, 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 and this. Often broadcasts or your email newsletters need to come first. So I build them all at once. There's all kinds of ways to get this done. The reason it's evolutionary is because you never stop adding to the list. It never gets washed up. You still put Call my friend, get a birthday card for so-and-so, do the laundry. You still put all of that stuff on the list. So I hope that was helpful. That was just one small thing that makes a huge difference. Another thing I'll tell you that's huge is Gmail. i I got to give it to Gmail. The best thing that ever happened to me is when my computer burned up early this year. It burned up and burned up the backups and everything. Please explain. And I burned up it burned up my Outlook. I was using Outlook. Mm. And when I then I moved from my stand up computer to my big laptop. And then I went, huh, that's when I started to use my phone. A hundred percent of the time. I sit at the dog park and I run my business off my phone. I have an iPad but hey, I use this thing. Because now all of my email addresses, RoryCoachRory.com, all of them, they now go to one simple Gmail address. And wherever I am, I can run my Gmail. I signed all of your forms while well, I was at the dog park. I answered everything. I did everything just when I was having fun. So I was able to, from a feminine place, be wherever I wanted to be and to decide if I felt like checking my email. And if I didn't, I didn't. But when I felt like it, it's fun. You go through it and you never have to organize it, by the way. Organizing was a major thing. I'd put like your letter in with this. I do have categories and I do pull things into my business siren category and my RRCT's category and my live weekend categories. But mostly I just let them roll and I let Gmail take care of the hundreds of thousands of emails I get. So, that is a very feminine way to allow chaos to exist. I'm a very big on chaos, on allowing chaos to exist and not trying to put it in boxes. It's very feminine. Can you to allow explain more of that? You're wonderful. Thank you. You're letting me talk all the time. <laughs> chaos is something we try to control. 
It's a very masculine energy thing. Men, masculine energy people, try to control feminine energy people. Do you notice that? Your yeah. work, and there's somebody, and so many women are in their masculine energy at work. It's just so sad. And they're just looking for something to control. Constantly. Chaos needs to be controlled. Well, what is the most chaotic thing ever? Emotion. Mm. We all know men who can't handle, we say cannot handle emotion. Well, they can handle emotion great. They can't handle drama, which is very different than emotion. But emotion is the genesis of chaos. So stop trying to manage it. The concept is the protocol, the business sign protocol is to feel it. To allow the emotion to be felt. And with practice, you can handle the enormity of it. And you allow it to get bigger and bigger. And then you get bigger and you create more space and you allow the expansion to happen. Now you're not choosing either or. Now it's either and. Everything becomes possible and it all comes from your inner passionate feelings. No matter how peaceful you are feeling, which is an extremely feminine place to be in, you are roiling with emotions. We all are. The soup of emotions is always there. There's terror. There's anger. There's rage. There's love. There's bliss. There's sexual feeling. There's passion. There's so much going on. The peace has nothing to do with stopping all that. The peace has to do with being okay with all that. So when you are at peace with chaos, you are totally in your feminine. And then your to-do list will help you anchor it in a non-masculine way. It will allow you to anchor it, considering the siren is a very um, seaworthy kind of a, an idea. The sirens were these grotesque man-eaters with wings and mermaid fins on their silent island. And they sang... And men were lured by the sound and crashed their boats and climbed up onto the Siren Island and were promptly, grotesquely murdered. So I redid all of that. Hey, men crash their boats. People who want to buy what you have to offer, because who doesn't want that peace among chaos? Everybody. That's essentially what you're selling, no matter what your business is. I can help you solve this problem and feel peaceful. They crash their boats. Um, siren Island, they climb up and they are loved by the sirens who just want to play, but they never have to go out and search for men. They just sit on their island and men come. Same with business. We sit on our Siren Island and we do our thing and the world comes to us. The world comes to us. It's a piece, great. Yeah, I, I love that. And I think it's a piece about being magnetic, right? How to learn yes. and what you want. So is there... So is there, like, you mentioned that you have several tools. Do you have uh, tools on how to help a woman be more magnetic to draw in what she wants? I know that leaning back is part of it, like, also, like, letting people come to you. Like, do you have any other tips on, around being magnetic? Because what I see so often is uh, women that are try out there trying to do absolutely everything. And then they're, like, burning themselves out. They're experiencing burnout. Um, they're stressed. All these sort of stuff. What are some fun exercises that a woman can start to do to really drive it? First thing, sit down. <laughs> you are just practicing masculine energy. That's all. So you, you are practicing what you are being. So you need to practice the feminine energy. So the, the question is that you bring up. Magnetize. Magnetize to what? To what are you magnetizing people to? What's going on in here that they should be magnetized to? So that's what it is. In other words, where do I want to? What do I want to be? What do I want to do? What's going on for you? What am I feeling? And that's what they are magnetized to. So the tool is when you find you, yourself swirling and doing and overdoing, and you can feel it. The tools are uh, so many tools, but let's say the first one is to catch it, to become aware. So the first thing that happens is your shoulders go up. That's the first thing that happens. 
So watch your, where your shoulders are. Keep checking in. Oh, my shoulders, if they're here, just let them down. Mm -hmm. That automatically is going to fire in your feminine energy. Change your body posture. Lean back. If you're in your living room or you're on your sofa or in your kitchen, just do that. Now what you want to do is touch something. Touch your coffee cup. Hold on to it. It's noisy out there. Should I should I untangle myself and close the door? No, it's okay. I, I, I can barely going. hear anything, so it's it's okay. Okay, great. It's my husband coming. My husband <laughs> okay. takes care of a lot of this stuff around the house because that's what he does. Yeah. He feels my passion and he takes care of the stuff. And in business, you'll hire staff to do that for you. I wanted to talk that's, about that. That's support. That's the place to go. Right. All right. So you touch things. I call this tool touching objects. Mm -hmm. What does that do for you? It's like the tree trunk. It grounds you. I mean, I don't want to use those words. Anchor. I like. I use anchor in Business Sirens Handbook because an anchor is low, and it it lays on the ground. But you can lift it up, and you can sail with the anchor. So it's not. You're not stuck anywhere, right? It's a nice. I think it's a nice feminine flowing through the air kind of thing. But it's heavy metal, right? When you touch an object, I, I wear necklaces. I hold on to them sometimes. You can touch your own hand. Uh, a table, slam your foot on the floor. All of a sudden, you take yourself out of your head instantly and into the present. As soon as you go into the present. But it's easy to say, oh, be present. So how? So here's one tool. Touch an object. Hit an object. You will feel it immediately. If you don't feel it by holding it, then hit it until your hand stings. Then, all of a sudden, you focus your energy on the sting of your hand, and you go, <gasps> for that one second, you are in feminine energy. People will say, well, take a breath. Well, that does it for you, but it's gotten so old for all of us, it's meaningless. I take a breath, but I'm still in my head. But touching objects is new, and you can touch so many objects. You know, you're at a meeting, a business meeting, you got a cup. Hold on to your cup. Feel the cup. Feel your hand on the cup. Now, ask yourself, how does this feel? This feels cold to my hand. Automatically, you're in your feminine now. You're still talking, but you're in your feminine. So what's happening is you're, oh, I'm sorry, to get emotional, just feeling it. You open up yourself. You become more of a vessel. I'm just, holding, I'm just holding a cup. That's all I'm doing. I'm not doing a complex being present thing. You, know, you can do it by feeling the rung of the chair if you're sitting on a bar stool. That's, that's huge. And touching objects doesn't get old because there's so many objects. You can use your phone, you know, and really experience. It. Oh, I feel the shine. Go with the shine. For one second, you're in your feminine energy. Now you have become aware in a way that you haven't become aware. If you're just going around, you know, doing stuff, you're not even having that moment. But if you stop to touch an object, you'll catch on. Now you do that more. Now you start to feel what that feels like. Now you know I'm standing in front of my boss or I'm standing in front of a person I would like to work with across the Skype screen or I'm standing in front of a client that I want to convert Am I thinking, oh, it'd be so great to work with her, and I know what I can do for her, because all that energy is masculine, it's going to make her run like heck. <laughs> if you lean back and you're feeling her, and you're touching your coffee, and you're right there with this coffee cup at the same time as you, as you, as you are speaking to her, the energy is so completely different. She'll feel you, because guess what? You're essentially letting her experience, or him, this entire immensity of feminine energy that you have allowed to be because you touched this object and you opened up this whole cavern of potential feeling. Now the passion and the feeling, the anger, the rage, it's just energy. It just starts to radiate out and it envelops the person in front of you. It just takes a little getting used to being able to handle this much energy. Now that you feel... I've got to shut down. I call this the shutdown key. It's a big, long thing I'm working on. But essentially, there's a point where the energy becomes too much for us, and we shut down. We, like, shut it off, and we go from our necks up. And we forget what it's like. 
So catching where your shoulders are, catch where your jaw is. Then another tool is just catch what's going on in your belly. Mm. Usually we're doing Pilates. Pilates, I'm sorry if you're a Pilates teacher, but if you're a Pilates teacher, I would really love for you to find a way to do Pilates softly because Pilates makes you hold in your belly. And when you hold in your belly, you're losing 90% of where that feminine energy can be. Teach to hold in your belly at some moments when you're doing some exercises to build the strength, but then to let it hang into your hand the rest of the time so that you're breathing into your belly and your hand. It's a weird feeling. You feel like, oh, I should be holding on my stomach. Let it out. That's, you'll start to expand right there. <laughs> so that was a lot of a lot I to handle. That. And they're not meant to be a big group. They're meant to be very single things you do one at a time. Sometimes your belly, sometimes your shoulders, sometimes touch an object. So that was a lot. <laughs> I, lo I love that because um, whenever I'm at the gym, right, even a dancing mm -hmm. class, I like, I've never felt, I've never felt a desire to like hold in my belly all the time. And she would like make comments to the group, but I know that she was talking to me, right? Because I like, I kind of like had my belly like hanging and she was like, well, tighten up yes. your belly. And I was like, well, I don't want to. <laughs> like, honestly, I feel more comfortable this way. But yeah, I do agree. Like whenever I'm like breathing into like my belly and all this sort of stuff, I do feel more connected and I feel more in my feminine and expansive. So that's really powerful. And another thing that you mentioned that really resonated with me was about being able to hold in uh, powerful emotions and deciding not to shut down, right? Uh, what happens when you shut down like on an emotional level and how can that affect you in, in, in your business or in your um, decision making? It shuts down your entire process. And we all do it. And we all do it at different levels because we can all handle different sizes of emotion. Some of us grew up in families where we can handle big lots of anger and, and spew, but we can't handle loving ourselves. We can't handle feeling good about ourselves. The second we do something that's wrong, we're all over ourselves. We call it wrong. The second we do something that doesn't turn out the way we said it should work, we're all over ourselves. So we're constantly vigilant and we're shutting ourselves down. Essentially, we're shutting off our creative juice. And what is business? What is success? What is happening in all but female creativity? Men kill for that. You know, we, we, isn't it true that we've kind of made a standard for the only men who are creative are gay men? We've made it a feminine aspect. And it is a feminine aspect. It's an aspect of our womb. So think about it. Business ideas, they sound so masculine, but they're not. They're not at all. They're coming from what it is you want to do. You want to teach. You want to coach. You want to help the world. You want to change the world. You want to become rich and famous so that you can change the world. Let's make a female Tony Robbins, who is a man I know, by the way. I used to live with Tony Robbins as a roommate when he was just beginning. That's I'm the one who basically introduced him to the firewalker, Tolly Birkin. And he's just as amazing as he seems. He is just as true and good and solid as he seems. And he's totally masculine energy, completely masculine energy. So let's have a feminine counterpart of that. I know several women who are close to that, but change the world, you know, there are several women who, who, who actually are doing this. And you don't need to do it in your masculine energy. I doubt that George Clooney's wife is a masculine energy woman. Angelina Jolie, super powerful woman. We've all glommed on to her image because she really wants to change the world. She's creative as an actress. She wants to be a director. She wants to do these things. She's honing her skills, for heaven's sake. She doesn't have to be brilliant right off the, the dime. But she does not lose that feminine aspect for us. She, she strikes us as a hugely emotional creature, doesn't she? Yeah, she is. She, she, she looks like this sculpted creature, but she strikes everybody, and all the papers write about her as an emotional creature. You can do it. Don't be afraid of chaos. And if you are afraid of chaos, fall in love with it, which is probably the biggest tool I can give you right now if you want me to go into that. Yeah, please do. 
please sir. All right. We are used to shutting down because we want to, we don't like something. We feel attacked by ourselves or someone else, which is a whole nother realm to talk about, and we put our armor on ourselves, and we try to keep our head above the armor and to continue functioning, pushing it out, thinking that that's the way to do it. And I use an acting metaphor, because my training as an actress is kind of about pushing and not pushing is really central to all of this. So we, we close all this up, and we don't like it. We say, I don't like that anger. I'm too good to be angry. We get spiritual. We do the spiritual bypass, and I'm totally into the spiritual. We, we say, no good. I don't like that. Well, that's what shuts us down. We're constantly creating a battlefield inside of ourselves. Oh, I want to make, make a million dollars. Oh, no, I don't deserve a million dollars. Oh, that feels incredible. I'd love to buy that dress. Oh, I shouldn't buy that dress. There's just always this battlefield going on inside of us. So my words are fall in love with it. It's the second anchor in the Business Sirens Handbook. Fall in love with it, which means I just judged myself as saying something stupid in an interview fall in love with not only the stupid thing I said, but the voice that judged it. Oh, I just judged myself. I just hit myself down and slapped myself. What a sweet voice inside me that's just trying to protect me and fall in love with that judgmental voice. We often try to fall in love with the voice that was wounded, but we very rarely fall in love with the part that was batting the rest of us around or other people around. Fall in love with that. Fall in love with the overwhelm. Fall in love with all the stuff that comes up. That will create the peace. It will create this big soup inside you and create a field to expand. The moment you feel something that's a self-attack, like, why did I do that? And you fall in love with the voice that said, why did I do that? And you really fall in love with it, your whole body will shift. You can feel it all just change immediately. All of a sudden, everything gets lower. All of a sudden, you start to feel like a tingle in your arms. You have that moment where you feel moved, and there's where the feminine emotion helps you feeling moved. And all of a sudden, you start to feel things unlock, and then the shutdown will stop. All of a sudden, you switch to live. And, oh, I feel emotional just feeling that. The, the moment you accept and love, not just accept, but fall in love with this part of yourself that's raging at yourself, or, or complaining, or doing all those things that we say stop us, you feel completely different and your feminine will take over. And from there, you, you can do anything. I love that. I absolutely love that because at first it was um, foreign for me to, to accept those like darker thoughts or darker emotions. But I realized in the process and what I've seen with my clients too is that you have to feel it out fully. And another thing is that what you resist persists. Like if you come from a place yes. of judging, you will yes. always, always recreate more of that in your life. But if you're more accepting, it, it helps you be more accepting with yourself, with the process, and everything starts to flow in a natural way. I think that's, that's yes. really beautiful. And um, one thing that I wanted to ask you um, is that you've mentioned this throughout the, the entire interviews about allowing yourself to be supported because as feminine women like can you talk about the process of allowing yourself to receive support because what happens is that at least my clients would have told me when they first start is that they have their to-do list right and they set themselves up to do so many different things that day and when they don't finish it they start to beat themselves up over it I always tell them, you know set yourself up for win to win and also allow yourself to be supported in this journey, right? Like you don't need to do it alone. So if you could talk a little bit about how integrating support in your life helps you achieve more, more ease and flow, I, I would appreciate that. Excellent. Well, for one thing, I've never been without a coach. I would never be without a coach. My coach, since the day I began Coaches Training Institute, was Ryan Eliason, who was my co-student and we maintain a relationship all the way through he's very very famous now in the business world and we're still friends and we he's been coaching me all these years and my partner Evan Pagan I'm always happy to go to him well it's easy 
to go to people who are obviously clearly huge and it's very expensive so most people I come into at the beginning of the career do not want to go for the expensive ones they they buy the programs but buying programs is not the same thing as one-on-one -on -one with somebody it's just not that's not you know that's why my biz program only takes 20 women and we're just all one and one for eight weeks constantly because it doesn't help to lay this out you know because we interpret everything in our own way so what I would really love for to put out there is you can receive from anyone everyone you meet has something to offer you the idea is to take it in where we get conflicted is we start looking everywhere we get caught up in all these different ways of doing things and all of a sudden we can't do them there's too many things and it's too far ahead of us internet marketers are way far too far ahead of a woman who doesn't even have a client funnel set up or know what she's doing or how her passion is however a coach or a mastermind group that is geared towards the beginner is the perfect place and you don't need like the most famous coach in the world all you need is somebody who knows enough more than you do and can hear you and that's what I do I talk with women all the time I am constantly looking for input and I've hired coaches because Ryan doesn't have time for me anymore so I'm, I'm on the lookout for new coaches you need someone to be there for you and it's not like to tell you what to do and to make the plan although that, that's included what it is is to hear you. We women are out there at levels we've never experienced before. We don't even know what they're supposed to look like. Our mothers didn't do this. Our teachers taught us alphabet. They didn't teach us how to do this. We're we're swimming. Yeah. You need somebody to swim with you. You need somebody to hold your hand, hear you, and not only you know just put their blanket plan on you, but to hear what it is that you do. I believe that we all work differently, we all take in information differently, we all want to express things differently, we all, that's why the to-do list is this way, 100 women looking at a to-do list would pick different things to do, they would do it differently. So a coach will help you to find how you do things. So that's why I want to laud you as a personal coach. And how do we receive? Most of us go to a coach and then try to tell them what to do. We tell everybody what we want to do and put the plan. And we instinctively go for coaches who are in their masculine energy to put plans on top of us. And then we're just constantly masculinizing each one of us. Instead, find a coach who gets this whole feminine thing, who gets the ability to hear you and will allow you to lean back, will play boy with you like you're doing with me now you're playing boy with me see so I'm able to express myself that's what a good coach does but you know you're feeling me from your feminine energy it's a very unusual thing that you're able to do right here and hopefully that I'm able to do and the coaches I know when I train are able to do we're able to feel you and get you and hear you and still play boy so that you can lean back and find yourself yes I'm not trying to play off your masculine brain I'm helping you get down so that you can do these plans from a feminine place. So you can follow what I call the protocols, the business arm protocols. I'm sure yours are different. So receiving is all about, I do something called the water wheel. I'm on many tools, but it's a favorite. It's, we lean back, and we used to imagine a man in front of us, but how about in business you imagine a client, the money, put something in front of you, and imagine this big barn side water wheel so there's water involved it's picking water up from the other side and coming over and landing all that water on you so you pat it on yourself and what you do is you go like this with your hands and you imagine it coming you just imagine it coming to you it's so foreign to most of us it's ridiculous we're constantly going like this imagine it coming towards you that little experience in your own experience place and at the same time make sure you're feeling in your belly look where your shoulders are and experience the receiving of it it's not a mental thing I'm going to receive it's an experience so try this water wheel and see if you can feel it it's an amazing thing 
Yeah, definitely. But that kind of answer you were looking for? It does. And right. as you were talking about this water wheel, like I could feel it. I could really see how that could be beneficial for anyone that truly wants to receive. You just allow yourself to, you know, go through that experience. I mean, that's why I'm so into all these sort of things like um, mandalas, like painting, drawing, and all that sort of stuff because it helps you to connect fully and come back to your feminine and just be really present. Once again, I really wanted to thank you for, for your interview. This was really powerful. And I'm sure that all of the viewers Fine. absolutely loved it. So I'm going to ask you to uh, share with us, like, what were your favorite moments and what were your, like, ahas? Because this was a really interesting interview. So I wanted to thank you once again. It was a pleasure to have you today. And um, I know also that you're offering a special gift for all of the viewers. So if you could share a little bit about it with us, that would be great. Sure, just go to businesssiren.com and you'll see the box of having it all and just let me know where to send it with your email address and you will get have it all the 10 paths to walking the feminine trail hmm. it's short enough to for you to get the 10 paths which i expand on in other ways but they're pretty unusual so i didn't want to tell you what they are <laughs> <laughs> they're about finding your business siren personality they're about woo, -woo things too but, but there will really make a difference for you and it's free and let me know you know how it changed whatever your feelings about your work are it's a different way of looking at the client funnel but essentially it's looking at life as the client funnel as your, your client customer funnel I love that that's really and what that what that feels like mm -hmm. I mean it all comes in it all comes through your funnel I love that. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so, so You're much. You're very welcome. So, uh, I this... truly enjoyed you. <laughs> Thank you. Like, I really love this interview. I'm going to really listen to it later on today because it was really powerful. Um, I wanted to thank everyone for, for um, it's cutting off a little bit. That's why it's, I'm having trouble understanding at the end. But um, I wanted to thank everyone for joining us today. I hope you really enjoyed this interview, and we'll be talking to you very soon. Take care.